Hey guys, welcome back to another one of our demonstration videos. In this video, what I hope to do is demonstrate how to weld a V-groove with a backing strip. We will be doing it in the flat or G1 position. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw it up here on the board and we're gonna talk about how that's gonna be designed, like how the actual groove is gonna lay out for our particular project. I'm also gonna talk about where those beads are gonna to need to be placed and then I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna show you guys how to grind it up, tack up the plates, and then actually weld it out. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a V group. So it's gonna look like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and spread them out a little bit. All right. So we got our backing strip right here. Now our backing strip will be a quarter inch, quarter inch by one inch wide, okay? So that'll be the size plates that we're gonna be working with for our backing strip. The thickness of these plates, we're gonna be a 3 8 so we'll put 3 8 here. 3 8 thick, and roughly, we're gonna put, I would say, about three inches. I say three inches, but what's gonna happen is we're gonna run it once, then we're gonna cut it down, and we're gonna keep on using that same piece of metal as many times as we need to to get practiced and good at this project. Um, there's the reason you want more plates there is really just to kind of like cool down the weld. They're gonna they're gonna heat up. It's just gonna make it the weld a lot easier to weld, but it shouldn't be a big deal. So don't worry too much about hitting that three inch mark. Maybe for the first one you do, you're gonna be able to do this. But as we keep cutting it down, it'll change. So I'm gonna erase that for now, but just so that way we can go ahead and we can put our root gap in here. Our root gap that we're gonna be doing is gonna be a quarter inch quarter inch root gap, and the, the groove angle, so from here all the way over to here, is going to be that 60 degrees, all right? Again, each side will be at a 30 degree, um, 30 degree angle when we cut it, and there will be no root face on this uh, particular bevel. So it'll be taken down to a nice uh, razor sharp edge. It doesn't have to be razor sharp, just, just a nice edge, okay? Now, the hardest part is knowing where to lay all those beads in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna erase this, so that way we don't have to worry about all this extra. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do my root. So my root will look something like this. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to do that whole root in one bead. Not, and now I'm not saying you can't tie in and weld another one because this bead is actually gonna take a lot of metal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in from the top here and we're gonna be bouncing back and forth. We're gonna do an oscillation all the way down that groove. And I'm hopefully gonna be able to show you that so you can see it really well. But we're gonna go over and we're gonna to touch each side of that bevel as we're traveling down the plate. So this one will probably take a little bit more than one welding rod. You will more than likely have to tie in. Now, after you're done with the root, what we're gonna do is you wanna make sure you check both of these sides, make sure if you have any undercut, you wanna clean it out. You wanna make sure you hit it with a wire wheel or something like that. Get in there with a pick and really clean it out. No slag, we need to make sure we get all the slag out of there or else when we're welding over it, we're gonna have a slag inclusion. The next bead will look something like this. We're gonna call this bead number two. When I'm welding this bead, I'm probably gonna have my welding rod come in it at a little bit of an angle into that bevel and I'm probably just gonna aim right at the toe of this root weld. This one should be pretty easy. Uh, again, you're gonna, you wanna make sure it's nice and full, make sure there's no undercut, make sure that you have no roll or cold roll or anything like that. Bead number three is gonna be a lot like the root pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it about like this. So we'll call this one number three. When we go ahead and we lay this one in, I'm gonna probably have a little bit more of an angle pointing towards the bevel, but I'm gonna be doing a little bit of an oscillation because I wanna make sure that these two beads are kind of in at the same height, I should say. Sometimes you don't have to do an oscillation. Sometimes you can just kind of put it in there and weld it out. It all depends on how it looks when you get in there. Now, what happens after this, so we have our root, we have our filler pass, and now we need to work on our cover. Now the cover, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the first bead right about here. We're gonna go ahead and weld along. So it'll look something like this. So this will be root, or let me make that a little bit smaller. Call it like that. This will be bead number four. Wanna make sure that you actually um, come up over that edge 
if you don't come up over that edge, you're gonna have um, underfill problems. So you wanna make sure that that bead is up a little bit. And then it's pretty much, we're just running 50% overlaps all the way across till we get this, this cap completely done. So bead number five should hopefully look something like this. It's gonna be, again, it's just a 50% overlap. And then finally, you're gonna have bead number six. And it'll be in here like that. Now, the, the height of this cap from the surface of the plates needs to be no more than eighth of an inch. So we're gonna have from here to here, no more than eighth of an inch, all right? Again, we wanna make sure that there's no valleys at any of these contact points. Um, otherwise, that would be a major problem. Again, we have our root, our filler, and then we have our cap. This should hopefully be about six welds. It doesn't always work out perfect. Sometimes when you're welding, you're gonna figure out that you might have to make some changes. You might have to grind something out that went bad and you're gonna to have to fill it in and it's gonna change how this thing lays out. So if you don't do exactly this, that's okay. It's still gonna to get to the same point, all right? What I do want you to worry about while you're welding this is one, everything very clean. You want no slag anywhere. You wanna make sure we grind all our plates really clean. We wanna make sure that we are touching the bevels as we're welding along. If you go through this whole thing and you never aim that arc at that bevel, it's not gonna get good penetration or good fusion in there, and then that's gonna cause that plate to fail over time. Otherwise, that's kind of the basics of it. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna grind up my plates, I'm gonna tack them up, and I'm gonna go ahead and weld that out for you. Now, you wanna make sure that you grind even that backing strip, just one side of it. I grind the whole surface, seems to work out the best, and then you're gonna hit all of the V groove or bevel. I make sure to do the top a little bit and do the bottom. It's really good for making sure you don't have any dross on that uh, bevel anymore. All right, so when I'm tacking up my V groove, what I do is I take an extra backing strip and I go ahead and set it on the table. And I have my backing strip that's already ground set right next to it. And I just go ahead and lay my plate on top of it. Kind of just try to make sure this plate's on there pretty straight, about a quarter of an inch in and I have about one inch runoff tabs on both sides because my backing strip should be eight inches and my plate should be six. Let me go ahead and tack that. And we're just gonna tack it on the front end and on the back end. These are really just uh, setup tacks, so it, it's smart to just do them really small or really light. That way that you can make sure if you have to break it back off, it's not a big deal. Again, I'm just using my hand to push that plate down to make sure there's no um, openings or gaps there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay another backing strip right here and I'm going to lay my upper plate right here. At this point I'm going to take a quarter inch plate and I'm just going to set it in two in between or set it in between these two plates. That way I get my quarter inch spacing. I'm going to tack here and here again. All right, so at this point, it's a good time to look in here, make sure that you don't have any gaps that are over about a 16th of an inch. Your gap is not smaller at one end versus the other. You wanna make sure it's nice and straight. And we can go ahead and flip it over and we can actually do our, our full tack welds. So what we're gonna do is a one inch tack weld starting at this edge all the way over. And then start it, we're gonna do another one from this edge all the way over and then we're gonna have one one inch tack weld right in the middle, okay? So the reason we do this is so we can cut out strips later on for testing if we would like. So it's a good time to practice that. So now I got my plate that's all done. I uh, went ahead and just wire wheeled everything off to make sure that there was no grease, no dirt, no nothing in there. Um, especially make sure there's no slag from tacking it up. Um, as you can see on the back, I have my three tacks that are all one inch welds. Um, again, you wanna try to get them spaced as best you can apart. Uh, you can spend the time, measure it out if you'd like. It's always a good idea. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna weld that first pass in there and I'm gonna go ahead and run through that really quick with you so you can see how that would look before I start welding. 
All right, so when you go about welding your root pass, I want you to make sure that you start out here on this uh, runoff tab. The reason you wanna do that, you wanna, you wanna try to have a weld out here that's about at least half inch out. That way you've got some, some, some uh, place to put that cover pass when you go over and weld it. Otherwise, these corners won't get filled in enough and we'll have a problem called underfill. So you're gonna go in and you're gonna start out here, let, the, let that bead get warmed up, that puddle get nice and big, and then you're just gonna go side to side all the way down this plate. The reason you wanna go side to side is you want the arc from that rod to actually penetrate into this feathered edge on the bevel. You know, you want both sides to really get hit with it. So you wanna make sure you're going both sides, get all the way as far to the side as you can, back and forth, all the way across. You're probably gonna to have to tie in somewhere around three quarters of the plate, probably around here. So just tie in, keep going, and make sure that you run off onto this uh, runoff tab too, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get my stuff on and we're gonna go ahead and weld this out, get the root done, and then we'll go ahead and continue from there. Now this is probably one of the most crucial welds in the whole plate, so just keep bouncing side to side. Um, this is a lot faster than I'm actually welding it. I've got this sped up so that the movie isn't quite as long. So just a slow, deliberate back and forth, making sure to tie in both of those bevels as best you can. Watch out that you keep your rod straight up and down too as you're welding along. So I welded about half of it is all I could get. Um, this is my uh, runoff tab. I want to show you how much I went on to it. And I just went ahead and tied in and continued welding. Now, I want to make it very clear, it took me about almost two full rods to weld out this root. So don't be afraid to really let it uh, fill in on this one. It will pay off in the long run. All right, so now that I've welded my, uh, my root in, one thing I want to point out is how much I use those runoff tabs. Um, this, is, this is correct. Try to do this as much as possible and do it on every pass to build it up. I want to make sure that I don't have any undercut. If I do need to maybe grind this weld down, this tie-in right here, um, do that at this point. Otherwise, you're ready to move on to the next weld. So what I do is the next one we're going to split into two. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld it just like so. Now, in reality, this is just a fillet weld. So I want to treat it just like a fillet weld. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna point it right at the toe of our root pass when we're welding, and we're just gonna fill it in. All right, so let's go ahead and weld that. All right, now another thing I wanna talk about is my positioning. Uh, the positioning you see me do is not the most desirable. I personally like it so that my hands can be you know, fall off the table, and I kept having problems with my hands hitting the table, but for um, filming purposes, we had to set it up like this. So try to set this thing close to the edge, so that way you can take advantage of letting your hands fall off the table. And uh, it just makes, just makes things easier. Now when I'm welding this one, I'm trying to keep a gap between the top edge of that bevel and the top edge of my uh, my puddle there. I wanna keep that pretty small. I wanna see about a 30 second of a, an inch left over, maybe even less than that. So just try to keep that in mind as you're welding along. Okay, so now that I've welded in my uh, second pass, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna flip the plate 180 degrees and I'm gonna weld up this nice little uh, groove that we now have. It's pretty much a repeat of our root pass. We're just gonna bounce around from side to side and just let it fill in. Make sure that you do go slow enough to really let it fill in. I also, like when I was welding my second pass, see how I have this nice lift now. To, so when I go and put my root pass on, I have a nice reference line. I'm gonna kind of be watching this top edge and making sure that I create a nice reference line too. It'd be really smart if I try to make sure that it's about the same height. So that way when I put my uh, cover pass on, it'll lay nice and flat. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit better view, a little more close up of that reference line that I've created and how close my weld actually came to that top bevel. Um, otherwise, this is just kind of how it looks. Don't be afraid to tie in and make sure you're using those runoff tabs the whole way through this project. During uh, bead number three, I didn't have to oscillate at all. It actually was a pretty nice uh, groove there. Make sure that if this groove is smaller than about an eighth of an inch that you do grind it out a little bit. So it can't get down into those tight grooves, or the weld can't get down into those tight grooves. So make sure that it is uh, reasonably sized. Like I said before, your final um, bead here should look nice and flat across the two beads, 
and you should have nice reference corners coming up from that bevel. So now that I'm to this point, I'm ready to start my cover pass. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay that right on the edge of our uh, V groove right here, our bevel. So that way we start it there and we're just gonna go ahead and do pretty much a 50% overlap back towards ourself. You doesn't matter which side of the bevel you start on, you start on this side, you can flip it around, start on this side, it don't matter. But start on one side and you're gonna travel to the other one, okay? So we had a little bit of a problem with our arc shots, but I pretty much just aimed right at that top corner and let it fill in nicely. Um, these took about a rod. I would probably extend those out a little bit more, let it fill in a little bit more, tie in if you have to. Again, just make sure that you do have a mound coming off of that plate, uh, no more than about an eighth of an inch. Um, I kind of shoot for about a sixteenth of an inch. Again, this is just a typical 50% overlap at this point. You're really just stacking the beads on there um, as nicely as you can. Make sure that you're not getting any valleys in between those beads and making sure that you are letting it fill, it, fill in because it does have to protrude past the, uh, the, the top of that plate. Now again, if the, uh, the, the groove that is in between that bead number five and you know where you're gonna put bead number six is a little bit tight, you may need to take a grinder and uh, you know open that up a little bit just so that way you can make sure that you are getting a good fusion down into that joint, okay? All right, so your final product should look something like this, a nice smooth cap across the top, your typical 50% overlap. Now, if you guys like, I'd love to come out and show you as much as I possibly can of how to weld this, but it does take some time, so I probably will be giving you more pointers than anything else. Um, this weld will be on display in the classroom, so if you want to check it out, uh, take a look at it, ask me any questions you want. Hope you do good.